So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the MOSFET gate capacitance. And what do I mean by gate capacitance? Well, we said in the previous video that uh, if I've got this MOSFET structure, and I'm just gonna draw out the MOS capacitor portion because we don't actually care about the source or the drain uh, right now. So I'm just gonna draw out the MOS capacitor structure. And we're applying a certain voltage to the gate, VG. And so this is our oxide. Let's assume that this is a P-type semiconductor. And here's our metal. And so we know if, uh, if VG is equal to zero, we've more than likely uh, got this depletion region here. And I say more than likely because it's going to depend, remember, on the value of uh, phi MS. So it's going to depend on the amount of band bending. And so unless we know the metal, we can't say for certain whether there's going to be depletion region there. But let's say that there is. Um, and so we've got this depletion region that's formed around the gate. Now, what is the gate capacitance in this situation? Well, we know that the way that we defined gate capacitance, or the way that we define capacitance in general, is when we've got a separation of mobile charge carriers, so here we've got a bunch of electrons in the gate and a bunch of holes in the body. So those are our charge carriers that are free to move around. And they're separated by the certain distance. They're separated by a distance of the thickness of the oxide uh, plus the depletion region. So you might just say, well, the, then the total capacitance is just the dimensions of the transistor. So this is W, uh, this is L, the length of the transistor and the width of the transistor. It's just W times L uh, times the uh, thickness, or times the permittivity, so epsilon divided by the thickness, which is T ox plus, uh, let's call this, yeah, XD, so the depletion, uh, depletion region thickness. But uh, you ran into trouble because what is this epsilon? Because we've got two different materials here. We've got the oxide and we've got silicon, and they've got two different epsilons. So the way that we model this, Instead of just lumping it all into one capacitor, we say that this is actually secretly two capacitors. Those two capacitors in series, a capacitor between the metal and the depletion region, and a capacitor between the ox or between the uh, this interface here, the oxide semiconductor interface, and the body. And you might say, well, isn't this a little contrived because nothing can actually move around here? Um, and yeah, it is a little bit, but physically we do have two capacitors in series. So charge will accumulate here, charge will accumulate here. And because of those two charges, we'll get also charges on these internal plates. So uh, just because the uh, there doesn't appear to be any charge at this interface doesn't mean that we'll have uh, we'll have issues. So if we've got two capacitors in series, let's call this C1 and C2, uh, then we know that the capacitance per unit area, so let's just divide everything by W and L, uh, just so that we don't have to carry that around everywhere, is just C1 times C2 over C1 plus C2. And so these are all capacitances per unit area implicitly, so per unit area. And if that kind of hurts your brain, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we we have to work with densities all the time in semiconductor physics and electrical engineering in general, uh, and it's it's in, it becomes incredibly helpful as as you get used to it. Okay, now what is this C1 and C2? Well, uh, we know that C1 is just the permittivity of the oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide, and C2 is just the permittivity of silicon divided by the thickness of silicon or the depletion region width. So we we have our answer. That's that's all there that's really all there is to it. Um that's the capacitance when we are in this is called the depletion mode uh, or depletion region capacitance. The depletion mode capacitance. And we have to keep in mind that this XD, this depletion region this is a function of voltage. So this is a function of the voltage that we apply to the gate. So as we increase the voltage um, and this, 
this depletion region gets larger and larger, so there's more ions within this depletion region, the capacitance is going to decrease because we have more separation between, between the charges. And at some point, so let me just draw that what that what that looks like. So we've got more we've got a larger depletion region when we apply a larger voltage. So say uh, VG is I don't know 0.5 volts. And so we have to keep in mind that this capacitance is a function of voltage. And so this capacitance per unit area is actually going to decrease as we apply an increasing voltage. And so it's going to decrease uh, to some minimum value. So if this is the if this is the initial capacitance, C initial, um, then it's going to decrease. Oh, let's let's not make the axes right there. Let's say it's it's going to decrease like to here. It's going to decrease to this minimum capacitance value, and that's determined by the maximum depletion region. Uh, depletion region width. Let's call that X D max. Or let me rewrite this down here. X D max and Previously, we said that well, the depletion region uh, we have to stop. We have to stop worrying about it when we see inversion. So, at the onset of inversion, um, other weird things are going to start happening. So we're going to start attracting electrons, and this depletion region stops growing. Uh, depletion region stops growing. Stops growing. So at some point, and we said that the voltage at which that happened, uh, or the surface potential, was two times the Fermi potential, and that was a somewhat arbitrary distinction. That was this known as the onset of inversion, and it's somewhat arbitrary, but uh, that's that's just a definition that we use. And so if you work out the math, uh, if you want to know what this C min actually is, uh, you'll you'll see that C min is just equal to C ox or the capacitance per unit area of the oxide. And again, this is implicitly per unit area, uh, divided by one plus the permittivity of the oxide divided by the permittivity of silicon times the maximum depletion region width divided by the thickness of the oxide. And this is just a really pretty form of the equation that I, that I personally like. Um, and so this is multiplied together. So it depends on this ratio, uh, how big the depletion width is compared to the thickness of the oxide. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because up here we've got, uh, we've got our depletion region separating uh, the charge by some additional amount compared to the thickness of the oxide. And so if we wanted to, we could solve for XD max because we know this is just, um, we have an equation for one-sided depletion region, just two epsilon silicon times the built-in potential, which here is two phi f uh, divided by q na. So if we wanted to, we could plug that in, and if we had a value of C ox and the thickness of the oxide, then we can get the, this minimum value. Um, and so in the next video, we're going to see what, how do we find this initial capacitance value, and what happens as we start increasing the voltage more. And we'll find that we actually go back up to the initial capacitance value and why that happens. So this is, uh, sorry, I should make this explicit. This axis is VG, uh, and this is the capacitance between the gate and the body. So this, uh, and so I'm gonna show you this, why this happens in the next couple videos, or perhaps in just the next one video. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna complete the treatment of the gate capacitance. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and comment and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.